morning everyone, welcome to the Matthew Gander hangar. Um, this week we've got 5X LDR, which is one of our Cessna 208s in for some maintenance. And we're gonna be doing some avionics modifications. Um, and we've got Dave Waterman here from Liberia, and Dave's gonna be overseeing the uh, modifications. So Dave, what are we doing this week? Yeah, essentially, my job here is to boss Mark around for a week, so this is going to be a fun week. Um, but what, what's been going on is we've seen a change and a reduction in the traffic system here. So what the traffic system does basically acts like a second pair of eyes for, for the pilot, so that what they can't see over the horizon and in the distance and other aircraft, we help them out with a piece of electronics that does basic active traffic interrogation. So it looks around and says, hey, who's out there? And other aircraft respond to that. So part of that is we'll put new antennas on this, we'll put a new box in, run a new set of wires in, integrate everything into the G1000 system, and then they get um, a better pair of eyes and more importantly, a functioning pair of extra eyes. Yeah, so it's really good for the pilots. They get a much better set of avionics. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna take us a few days to get the work done. So uh, this is gonna be, uh, what, a two or three day project? Probably three days. Three yeah. days. Yeah, so we're gonna show you what we get up to and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit about what goes into doing avionics maintenance on a Cessna 208 Caravan. So here we go then. The first thing that we need to do for this modification is to get the antenna removed from the aircraft. Here I'm removing the overhead panel surround in the cockpit so that we can get into the ceiling and unplug the four connectors that connect the computer in the back and the antenna on top of the aircraft. To take the surround off I need to remove the air vents and parts of the light fittings for the pilot and the co-pilot. After that, we remove a few screws, some sealant, and the antenna comes right off. Now it's time to get the right-hand seat out of the cabin and the cockpit, so that we can get access to the wires that run under the floor and connect the Garmin displays in the front to the traffic computer in the back. Here's Dave taking out the floor panels. And you can just see the wiring loom that we need to get to right underneath the panels he's removing. After that, we need to strip out the cockpit and get access behind the control panel so that we can route in our new wires. To do that, we need to remove the co-pilot's display and the right-hand cockpit panels. And that's it for day one. We now have access to all the parts of the aircraft that we needed to get to, and we're about ready to start our modifications. Hi hey everyone, welcome to day two of our traffic box installation. Uh, we had a really good day yesterday, managed to get most of the aircraft stripped down and we started some of the wiring. Um, today we're gonna be focusing on putting the antenna in and uh, installing the processor. This is the new processor that we're going to be installing and uh, we have to install it here in the tail of the aircraft. So um, we've got some avionic boxes down here on this rack on the floor and uh, what I think we're going to do is probably mount it somewhere about here and then all of the cables that we need to attach are here so that should root quite nicely into there. So yeah, we've got a few holes to drill off, a few things to put in, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes today. Right, so let's get our new traffic computer mounted in the back of the aircraft. To start with, I need to get all these other avionic boxes out of the aircraft so I can remove the mounting tray and install our new traffic computer rack onto the tray. The boxes gave me a bit of a fight with some stubborn connectors and some screws in funny places, but we got there in the end. Now it's time to drill some holes. The 
first thing that we need to do is to position our traffic computer rack on the tray and drill off the holes that the attachment screws will go through. I'm using an air drill here and a C-clamp to hold everything in place until I can put some bolts through the holes to hold everything a bit more securely. Next, we need to install some anchor nuts. Anchor nuts are fixed nuts that are held in place on the underside of a surface with rivets so that you can install a screw from one side without the need to hold the nut with a spanner. We use them in places that you can't get to the back of very easily. Here I'm positioning the anchor nut and drilling off the two small holes for the rivets that will hold it in place. I'm using some Clico temporary fasteners to hold the anchor nut in place while I drill it off. Before we can rivet the anchor nuts onto the tray, we need to countersink the holes that will go underneath our traffic computer rack so that it will sit flush to the tray when we install it onto the anchor nuts. To do that, I'm using a microstop countersink. This tool lets you set the countersink to the correct depth once and then transfer that countersink to all your other holes. This means that your flush head rivets will all be exactly the same. Right, let's get those anchor nuts riveted onto the tray. Because these rivets are so small and we have the work out on the bench, I'm using a tungsten block, a hammer and a punch to form the rivets. With all the anchor nuts installed, we just need to mount the traffic computer rack onto the tray and we're ready to go. In go the fasteners, and it's job done. Now we've just got to get it all put back into the aircraft and wired up. While I was installing the new computer rack onto the tray, the other guys in the team were running all the new cables under the floor so that we could connect the new traffic computer to the displays at the front of the aircraft. In goes the new traffic computer. Now we need to attach all of the connectors that allow the traffic computer to communicate with displays in the front of the aircraft. Lastly, we just need to connect all of the coaxial cables to the antenna so that the new traffic computer can see what's going on outside. On goes the new antenna. Now we just need to seal it round the edges before our modification is complete. All that's left to do now is to test it and put everything that we have removed back together. So we're in the final stages now. We've done the software, we've done the configuration. Um, we've done all the pinout tests and everything, so this box here is basically simulating a traffic target that's currently flying towards our, our aircraft, and we'll see whether it's coming up on screen. Now 
and there you go, that's what we wanted to see. Our simulated aircraft is flying towards us and it looks like the new traffic box is working fine. I think we can call that job done. Well, welcome back everybody. This is our final day um, with LDR. Uh, we've completed the traffic install, done a few yeah. other bits and pieces, but the main project that myself and Mark have been working on is the traffic. Um, so that was successfully completed earlier this, this week. Uh, new antennas install, new wires run in. We've given Mark a little bit of a baptism <laughs> in, into the world of avionics as well. Yeah, new, uh, new to the avi world of avionics, but yeah, it's been a good introduction actually getting this done. And uh, yeah, I've, I've learned quite a lot. So yeah. it's been, been a good week of work. Um, the guys uh, just behind us, uh, they're just uh, panelling up the aircraft now. So um, uh, we also did a little bit of paint work on the aircraft and uh, that's all getting buttoned up. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna release the aircraft back to service. So uh, I hope this has been interesting for you and you've been able to see a little bit about what we get up to in the uh, Department of Aircraft Maintenance here at MAF. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Toodaloo. Bye.